Hey again everyone, welcome to another episode of The Fix. Um, so this is the fourth episode. Today we're going to be looking at uh, one called the Blue Ice of Exit Glacier. Um, if this is your first time here on The Fix, uh, this is a new video series that I'm doing on my website called findawayphotography.com. Um, on my site I go and post a new photo each week and tell the story behind it. And the fix is the video series where I dig into those photos um, and I show you how I edit them start to finish um, from what comes out of the camera to what what the final photo that you see on the site is um, and today's episode it'll be the blue ice of exit glacier so this is one that I took in Alaska um, and there's a little town called Seward um, just south of Anchorage on the coast and you can do this hike it's quite popular it's called um, it takes you up to Exit Glacier um, and you can you can hike up along just kind of along the edge of the glacier so we'll I'll go full screen on the photo really quick while I'm telling you about it um, and you can hike up along the edge of the glacier here and it's just kind of down below you so close you can you can almost touch it and at some points you can actually uh, walk out and kind of get really close to the ice and I think you can even do tours out um, to explore some of the crevasses and that kind of thing but anyways um, in this one um, we we hiked up along the edge of exit glacier and then up to a section where where you could get a view out onto the ice field itself called the Harding ice field I mean it's really cool it's a really great hike um, if you're ever in that area I would highly recommend it or if you're looking for for a trip to make and um, Alaska's always been somewhere that interests you I would I would absolutely recommend Alaska. It's a really cool place to go and visit. And um, it's just like all the stories that you hear. Uh, pretty wild and untamed. So uh, anyways, this is um, this is Exit Glacier. Um, we stopped for lunch here and it was quite windy. Um, you can never tell that in a photo, but we stopped for lunch and um, I decided I had to get up and get moving to warm up a little bit again. And I ran out um, kind of onto this edge and was just looking over it and um, Hillary was with me and she snapped a photo of me kind of uh, looking over the over the glacier and zoomed in quite a ways so you can see all the details in the ice and the cool colors and um, it really is pretty incredible there so um, anyways that's the photo we'll get into um, how we edit it so let's go back and uh, hop into the develop module and we'll reset this start from scratch and we'll see what we can get so that's what it looks like straight out of the camera. Um, so you can see when I reset it, it reset the crop and everything. Um, so that's always, usually the first thing that I look at is getting the crop kind of where I want. Um, and I tend to go quite wide. Um, I don't crop in the sides very often. Um, I do some portrait, um, like the upright photos uh, from time to time, but everything I do tends to be a little bit wide and it'll be the same thing in this one. Um, I use these rule of third guidelines um, just as that is guidelines, they're not um, not anything uh, set in stone or anything, but I use it kind of as a, to give me an idea of, um, yeah, I'm gonna bring it in just a bit, um, an idea of kind of where I want to attract attention to. So the idea with rule of thirds is that the intersection of all the corners is kind of where the eye is drawn the most. And um, if you have dividing lines between the um, the ground and the sky and that kind of thing um, tends to be best to try to put them on these um, rule of thirds lines. It just gives the photo, you know, that kind of even con composition and that kind of thing. So, anyways, that's the idea with that. Um, so, so I've kind of got myself on that lower third. Um, unless you've done it intentionally, it looks a little bit odd having um, things of focus directly in the middle of the photo. So, um, by bringing me down to that that intersection there and then I'm just going to crop in the top just for a little bit of fun um, get rid of that dark corner up there and make everything look like that that big expanse of ice um, cool something like that and then you've got kind of this diagonal line here as a division and then you've got this kind of the light blue ice um, streaming in in kind of a curve from the left edge so overall I think it looks pretty good like that um, good enough. Done. Um, 
And the other thing that I look at when I'm cropping is just any uprights or horizontals, making sure that they look right. So the only thing that's a real guideline here is just myself. And I'm looking um, pretty straight up, so pretty stand-up kind of guy. So we'll leave it like that. Cool. So I think in this one, I'm just going to leave the temperature as it is. I'll probably come back and fine-tune that later after I've got the saturation and things like that bumped up. But I do find it just a little bit dark, so I'm going to just brighten it up a bit. Um, I always tend to look at the, the histogram to give me an idea of where I'm at, especially when I'm doing exposure. Everything looks pretty well centered. Um, if anything, though, I like it a bit to the right, so we'll go, we'll go something like that. I think that looks pretty good. And that kind of contrast that we lost, we'll bring that back in just a second here anyways. Um, so let's see. So with ones like this, I find going up in contrast brings out those details in the ice that I really like. But I don't really like what it does to the side or to me. Um, the lighting wasn't great for this one. Um, it was kind of... Uh, um, kind of side lit and front lit so it doesn't really give me the the color and everything so my back is all in shadow so it, um so I, I find that increasing the contrast kind of exaggerates that and makes it look a little bit worse so i'm going to actually overall just kind of look at here look at myself and i i find that dropping the contrast in this scenario works a little bit better so something like that maybe um what i'll do just while i'm here I'll grab my brush, reset everything, and I'm just gonna go and increase the contrast and just do this. So we're just worrying about contrast right now. And I'm just gonna go, um, so I've got, you can see it's painting on red. That's because I have the overlay set. So if I hit the Z O key, O as an Oliver, um, that will um, kind of get rid of that. And if I ever wanna see that again, I just hit O again. It shows me where I'm brushing. Um, and I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger, something like that. And that's just going to brush in that clarity, or the contrast, into the ice, just like that. And so then I get the best of both worlds. I get the extra contrast in the ice, um, but down on the bottom here and on my, my back, um, then we've got the contrast set individually for that. So it's kind of a kind of a good way to do it if it um, the contrast setting or any other setting doesn't work good for the whole photo it only does parts and then the other part needs something else then um, doing it that way works good um, highlights which we'll check those out quick oh, see, bring them down lift those shadows so this is going to be an important one especially for like I was saying my back before um, how it's all in shadow there so we don't want to go too much to make it look unnatural but I do like to you know see a bit of that color and that kind of thing so we'll lighten that up a bit um, whites um, if you look up here whites is going to slide kind of this right edge of the histogram and slide it more to where it's cutting off so this is going to set the absolute whites of the photo and um, holding down the option key can sometimes help you out here so you can see just as I get there, that's showing what's getting caught off, cut off by the histogram, so what is the pure white. And there's a couple dots up there. So it's saying those parts are pure white, and I think that actually looks pretty good. And then you can actually do the same thing on blacks until those first blacks start to pop in. And then, so I do that as a starting point, and then I kind of fine tune it from there. All right, I think something like that looks pretty good. Bit of clarity, see where that gets us. This is another one where I think it looks pretty good on the ice, but then it makes everything else kind of overboard contrasty, so, so we'll add just a little bit, and we can go back and kind of fine tune it in the ice and that later. I think that looks pretty good for now. So it's come a long ways for sure. Skip over that one. Uh, this one. So 
this glacial ice of exit glacier is incredibly blue so it's you can see a bit of blue coming out of the um, in the photo just from the raw file um, and I don't want to make it look unnatural or anything but I do want to bring out a little bit more of that blue because it was pretty stunning how blue it was so we'll just bring out a little bit more just to kind of just to capture that um, so you can see how much that does we'll We'll put some of that in for sure. We'll see what this one does. I think something like that looks pretty good. So bringing out a little bit more of that blue color. And just out of curiosity, we'll see what this. So it changes when we do the luminance. So we can make the ice a little bit darker or make those make those whites pop out. Um, to make it look natural though, I think something like that. Not too much of a change. Makes it look pretty good, so we'll settle, settle on that one. Red. So red is the color of my jacket. So, just, we'll just play around with that one. Actually dropping that down kind of evens that, evens out those really bright spots on my jacket from the sunlight as well as the, the shadows. Um, so something like that looks pretty good and then let's see what saturation does so I don't want to make it um, unnaturally bright or unnaturally colorful but a little bit more red doesn't hurt I would say and what about our greens cool something like that and we'll make we'll brighten those up just a little bit they're looking a little bit dark right now all right, so that's what we've got so far, before and after. Keep on moving. Um, sharpening is kind of the is the standard thing I do. We'll zoom in to 100% here. And then I use my option key, so I, sharpening, option key, this turns it black and white. Yeah, something like that. Um, I've got a lot of big, thick lines and that kind of thing that I want to sharpen, so I'm going to be increasing the radius. And I've done this in some of my previous photos and the previous episodes of The Fix, so, um, so you can go back and watch those as well if, um, if you want a bit more information of what I do when I'm sharpening. And all those details, those little fine lines, I'm going to bring those out for sure, so something like that. Cool. Then we'll zoom back out and do our mask quick so almost everything in the photo here I want to be sharpened so the the mask actually isn't going to cover that much some of the bigger lines here um, and some of the bigger lines in the in the glacier itself I maybe don't want but so you can see it's just bringing out some of that stuff on my back where it's um, dark and just kind of a big flat spot We'll let it take care of that, because we don't really need sharpening in there. It's just going to bring out extra noise, but something like that. Everything else, pretty much, other than that, I do want sharpened, so we'll um, we'll call that good. All right, and a bit of noise reduction, so there is going to be some noise in here. We're at ISO 200 and a pretty quick shutter speed, so noise won't be too crazy or anything, but we'll take out a little bit. Um, and the other thing with a photo like this is, any noise that you do have, little black specks and that kind of thing, are actually going to be hidden pretty well in the photo. Um, you won't see any noise in there, and you won't see any up there, really, unless it's color noise. But um, in this one, all our luminance noise is going to be pretty much hidden. So we're going to leave that for now. That looks pretty good. Um, we'll ch check remove CA anyways. Um, probably won't notice anything unless we start zooming in and looking around. And you usually notice that more when the when the sunlight is behind the subject and shining more into the lens. So with this kind of side lighting, it won't make won't make a huge difference. And we'll see what this does. I kind of like it more without it. So we're going to do that. Uh, just out of curiosity, some manual adjustments. Um, let's look at distortion. I was just out of curiosity, maybe see what it looked like pushing into the middle of the photo so kind of pushing me out making me look a little bit smaller i 
graphic that looks pretty cool. So it's just kind of making me look a little bit smaller. I'm going to have to crop out those sections of the photo, obviously. So let's do that quick. Bring that in just to the edge there. Bring that in to the edge. How's that look? before and after. Um, so you can see what I did there, it just kind of pushes me out, makes me look a little bit further away, but you can still see all those details in the ice. Um, so if anything, it kind of just makes that ice look a little bit more expansive. Um, so I think that looks pretty cool. All right, moving on. Um, I think everything looks pretty good in this section here. So we'll skip that and maybe a bit of vignetting. I don't want it too far in, so I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to drag that down, and then I'm going to just move this middle out, just kind of kind of darken the corners, something like that, cool, and then we'll set our spot for this, something like that, just to draw the attention into the middle a bit, cool, and while we're at it, I'm just going to throw reset this, go to a preset that I've called darken bottom, and just to kind of give you that dark to light transition, um, which kind of leads your eye into the photo and towards kind of, you know, this is the center and the focus of it, so this is just gonna um, kind of draw your eye into the middle. Something like that I think looks pretty good, cool. Maybe a bit too much. So that second one, I'm just going to feather out a little bit more and maybe drop this down. There we go. All right, so that's the start. And then just like always, I like to go back and tweak and fine tune things a bit. So I usually at this point, I kind of look at white balance and the temperature of the photo. So going too blue makes everything kind of overwhelmingly blue and going white or too much to the yellow makes you lose that blue color. So I think somewhere close to actually where it was looks pretty good. So I'm going to settle on that right there. I like the way that one looks. Contrast again, I'm still trying to decide what to do with that. I think I'm dropping that down even a bit more. better and then I'm going to go and brush a bit of that contrast and a bit of the clarity back into here and maybe just a bit of exposure how are we looking Sometimes I actually like to zoom out to this view. You can see before and after, and you just get that smaller perspective. And sometimes I'll actually make a few changes here. Um, I was looking at the shadows just to kind of brighten it up a bit. And something like that I think looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with where the contrast is now. Let's just see, bring those down just a bit, bring the whites, bring those whites up a little bit, to give it more of a pop. Cool. And now I'll probably throw in a bit of radio filter here, um, reset. And this is one that I made called extra pop and I just use it over and over. Um, kind of find the spot in the photo that I want to draw that extra attention to, which I think is going to be right about here capturing that ice and a bit of me standing there. Something like that. What does that do? Well, it has just a bit of clarity and a little bit of extra pop. Um, I'm just going to brighten that area a bit. Bring out the shadows a bit. Because your eye is always drawn to brighter parts of a photo. So by making whatever you want to draw the attention to a little bit brighter, 
and then adding the transitions dark to light from the corners and the bottom um, kind of just helps draw your draw the attention to the middle so your eye doesn't have to wander around the photo it just kind of knows where it's going and that's kind of the whole idea and so when you're processing a photo like this that's kind of what I like to keep in in mind is what's what's the idea with the photo what's what are we drawing the attention to and in this case it's um, you know all this detail in the ice and then uh, me standing there so so that's it um, we'll take a quick look um, this is what we had edited before so I took a snapshot um, so I'll take another one now just called after and this is what we had edited before it looks something like that um, I kind of like the new version more um, I think on the original one I didn't do that distortion adjustment which kind of pushed me into the frame so that's that's the one that we just adjust just um, finished editing um, so you saw the steps start to finish of that one and we'll take one last look of it at it get you a good idea and that's it so that is the blue ice of exit glacier edited start to finish for episode number four of the fix and thanks for joining me hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next episode